Massachusetts Congressman Joe Kennedy's campaign manager recently sent a letter to incumbent Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey's campaign manager. It was a personal request and a public statement demanding Markey instruct his supporters immediately end the attacks on Kennedy's supporters. Mm, poor oh, Joe. Or that one letter also yeah. states <laughs> that the attacks on Kennedy's supporters are, quote, beyond the pale. <laughs> D.C. Bureau Chief of the Intercept Ryan Grimm joins us for more on why Kennedy is betting on using this Bernie bro attack against Ed Markey. Great to see you, Ryan. Good to see you, Ryan. Good to see you. Oh, my God. I love yeah. the, this Flashbacks. whole thing. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, can you just set up the story for us, what the context is and what was actually said in this letter? Well, the Kennedy campaign you know, literally asked to speak to the manager about, <laughs> about mean tweets. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, this morning, the, you know, some of the Kennedy folks are, are back online saying that there are still there are still mean tweets, despite the despite the request that the that the, that the tweets be polite. What was so remarkable, really, about this letter to me was kind of the, the, the coincidence that it was sent on the same day that Kamala Harris's husband and some other leading figures of the party were, were actively elevating and celebrating the K-Hive, which, which is a kind of conscious and, and deliberate kind of toxic patrol. Like, the, you know, they, they organize behind the scenes of a... They, they target particular people. They 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 dox them. Uh, they use some of the most uh, you know vicious and vile language against people. And and like I said, they they use that viciousness deliberately as as a tactic in an organized fashion. It's well known. It's well organized, and it's and it's being celebrated by the centrist wing of the of the Democratic Party on the exact same day that the Kennedy campaign is complaining to Ed Markey. That, that, that there are people who are being mean uh, to Kennedy and, and uh, you know, cracking, cracking jokes that they find in, in poor taste. What, what struck me about the whole thing as well is that this is Massachusetts. You know, say what you want about Massachusetts. It's not known for its, its love of civility. You know, these, these, are, <laughs> these are not the most polite people that, that we have in the United States. And so saying like, hey, Massachusetts politician, your supporters are kind of jerks. It's, Okay, well, that's a Massachusetts politician who has supporters. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny, Ryan. I think I think what it was, and it seemed to work, was a way to get the media to write a story about it, right? Because as I understand it, it was written up in the media. I think it was like the Boston Globe or something like that. And then, of course, just like it was with Bernie, they're like, will you disavow your mean supporters? Overall, though, is this a sense of desperation from the Kennedy campaign? I mean, Markey had really one of the most effective campaign ads I've ever seen uh, that we played here on our show. He seems to be countering much of the Kennedy dynasty. There seems to be a sense that this is Kennedy is not really standing for anything except for his last name. Is is that actually catching on in the state? What's going on? It is. And so, you know, Kennedy needs to flip a, a number of voters who uh, are leaning towards Markey at this point. Th this, this flows from the Nancy Pelosi endorsement that, that came out recently. And so Kennedy is hoping that he can appeal to enough normie Democrats through kind of the, the, the kind of twin assault here of, look, Nancy Pelosi is with us. Look how mean some of Markey's supporters are being toward Nancy Pelosi. Is this really the kind of people ah, this yeah. that, that you want to represent? And then, and then you elevate again the kind of meanness, you know, at the same time that you, that you have this debate going on around Nancy Pelosi. Because what people need to remember is that in certain corners of the internet, it, it is uh, it's conventional wisdom that Nancy Pelosi is, is, uh, is bad. Uh, but if you ask normal kind of democratic voters, they're going to, you know, 80% of them are going to say, I like Nancy Pelosi. She's great. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're trying to find some arbitrage between that kind of more energetic uh, left that, that hates the kind of establishment wing of the party and say, look, you know, this isn't the nastiness we need. This is very Trumpian. You know, Democrats need to, need to be better about this. And so they want to use the, the mean tweets to kind of uh, smuggle in that, that narrative. And, you know, if he only needs to move, you know, 5% of, of those normie voters over to his side, you know, may, maybe he feels like with the help of the media, he can pull that off. It also seems to me like a go-to tactic when you don't want to engage on policy substance. So Kennedy in this race has sort of famously been unable to articulate a reason why he would really be a better 
um, senator than Ed Markey is. He's tried to hug, you know, the liberal issues and progressive policy positions as closely as possible. It's relatively new development for him. And basically make this sort of, you know, vague Pete Buttigieg-esque case about generational change. So it seems like this is also a tactic that is often employed when you don't actually want to talk about the substance and the merits. You just want to distract about, like, the type of people or the meanness of the supporters yeah. or tie him, you know, create, like, this toxic narrative around him without actually addressing policy that may be important to voters. That, that's right, because they, they, they couldn't really go to Ed Markey's left because even though Markey supported the I Iraq war and, you know, Markey has some votes that you could use against him, because he was so vocal about the Green New Deal, has the support of Ocasio-Cortez, has the support of uh, Sunrise Movement, he was able to lock up the kind of uh, the, the, the young left. So Kennedy can't really go to his left. And so what he's doing is trying to use Markey's strength, his, his support among young people, against him. Say, and, and in fact, in, in the letter, uh, Steffi Murray specifically refers to that. You boast about you know, your energetic supporters and, and, and the, the energy that you have online. Therefore, you are also responsible for, for the mean tweets that, that come out of that. And so you're, you're right, you know, he, he doesn't, Kennedy doesn't want to run to Markey's right because there's no room for that right now in a, in a Democratic primary in Massachusetts. He can't run to his left. He tried to run on generational change, but the fact that he doesn't have that younger generation with him foils that. Mm -hmm. So that so that leaves him with, well, I'm just a nicer Democrat. What Ryan, what would a Kennedy win mean to the organized left? It would it probably I mean, in my estimation, I'm an outsider. It would be a pretty dramatic defeat. Me, you know, they all went in basically all for him. And on a statewide level, like Normie Dems, as we were talking about earlier, went for Kennedy. What, what would that mean, I think, to the left movement? I mean, symbolically, it would it would be a big deal. It would it would, you know, they, they really went all in to defend him, and if they if they can't defend him, you know that that is a that is a chink in their armor. You know, materially, it it probably wouldn't end up being a a, a huge deal in in the United States Senate. You know, right. uh, Kennedy, Kennedy is is probably going to vote the same way as 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 Markey is, and uh, you know he he may may quickly you know sign on to the the Green New Deal even so that nobody tries to beat him from right. from the left in in six years. And, and Kennedy was kind of uh, driven here by by timing and, and circumstances because you know that that back in Massachusetts the thinking is that he he didn't have a chance in a in a Senate primary against an Ayanna Presley or a Maura Healy so if he waited until there was an open field then he didn't have a shot so his his really his only kind of decent chance was taking on uh, Ed, Ed Ed Markey and so he just you know shot his shot. Yeah. yeah. And finally, Ryan, I mean, it seems like the establishment has definitely lined up behind Joe Kennedy, certainly Nancy Pelosi, and she brought a number of members of the House, including some House progressives, along with her. Um, on the other side, so far, Bernie Sanders, correct me if I'm wrong, has declined to endorse Markey. Right. Um, of course, I mean, Markey didn't endorse him in his presidential campaigns. I get that. But do you have any intel or any reporting on why Bernie has decided to stay neutral in this race, which, as you point out, is really critical symbolically to the left? And also, the Sunrise Movement has really gone all in for Markey because he went all in with the Green New Deal. Sunrise Movement, also a really important part of the Sanders campaign. So just help us understand those dynamics and what your understanding is as to why Bernie is staying out. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a very Bernie Sanders move. You know, what, one of the things that people have been so critical of him over the years is his unwillingness uh, to get into some of these primaries and to endorse people. You know, people close to him say that the, the way he describes it is that, you know, early in his career, he, a lot of people would come to him for endorsements. He would endorse them and then they would get into office and they would be lousy. And so he felt burned time after time. And he said, so, you know what, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, Sanders has shown the ability to uh, evolve into new ways of, of thinking strategically and tactically. And he was the only elected federal official to endorse Cory Bush against an incumbent, uh, Lacey Clay. Uh, but, the, the, you know, these are these are baby steps in some ways. And you know, it was surprising. You know, he serves he serves with Ed Markey. Uh, the, and like you said, the, Bernie's most fervent supporters you know, are all in. This is extremely important to them. And you know he decided to stay out, even in the face of 
Kennedy being able to, to rally the establishment behind him. Mm -hmm. Ryan, always really interesting to have your analysis. We'll have you back on next week to find out what happens in this race and also the Alex Morse primary, which is also next week. Um, thanks so much for being with us. Good to see you, Ryan. Good to see you. Next on Rising, friend of the show Kyle Kalinske is going to weigh in on the RNC and what happened at the DNC, all of that when Rising returns.